This whole Derrick Henry thing has been a lot, and apparently it's not over yet because the Baltimore Ravens actually still may have a shot to land Derrick Henry. So, of course, um, as you know, Cole Jackson reported yesterday that the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans apparently had a deal in place. They had everything set. They were good to go on a trade that would send Derrick Henry to Baltimore. But... Apparently, according to him and his sources, he said that ownership stepped in. So that would be Amy Strunk, and she shut it down. She said no. She did the whole Adam Silver when the Lakers were trying to acquire Chris Paul some years back, and they shut that down. They did the whole Roger Goodell. I remember when the, the Ravens were involved in like this three-team trade that where they would have ended up in the long run with Jadavian Clowney, but years ago, and I forgot the other two teams that were involved. I don't remember if it was the Saints or the Jaguars. I always forget. Maybe one of y'all will remember. But anyway. It got shut down. But according to Paul, Paul uh, Kaharski, who covers the Tennessee Titans, uh, he said on Amy Adams shrunk, that's Titans owner, uh, but on her vetoing a deal for Derrick Henry, not true. So he's saying, oh, that, that did not go down. That didn't happen. So it, it's still a lot of back and forth, but the good thing to know is that by today, by 4 p.m. Eastern time today, whether it's true or not, whether it goes down or not, whether this trade happens or it doesn't happen, we will officially know by 4 p.m. today. And whatever trade the Baltimore Ravens may do or may not do, uh, we'll know by today and it will be official by today, which is a beautiful thing because Ooh, I know a lot of y'all with all the back and forth, it drives you crazy. For me, I, I don't mind it so much. But I know for a lot of y'all, it, it drives you crazy. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, with this whole Derrick Henry thing and, and really just any possible trade that happens today from any team. Adam Schefter reported yesterday, he said, any long shot chance of a potential Derrick Henry deal diminished even further at 4 p.m. today, which was yesterday. Uh, he said when the deadline passed for him to restructure his contract ahead of Tuesday's trade deadline, Henry has 5.5 mil left on his deal. I don't think it's going to happen, a source said. So uh, that means that that 5.5 mil that's left on his deal, uh, a team would have to take that on. Um, and the, that will get divided up uh, into the remaining, what well, the Ravens have, nine games left. So, yeah, they six and two, so they have nine games left. Uh, that will get broken up into those nine games. But they would still have to pay that, five, that entire 5.5 mil all to him. So that could make things a bit trickier if they weren't already tricky enough uh, between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans. But there is still a sliver of hope now um with it being the trade deadline uh we got some questions some people sent in some questions uh that they were like hey we we, we trying to get the answers to these but before the trade deadline uh and you know what just because we ain't gonna have no time to do them later because i mean the trade deadline is gonna come and go in a couple hours let's go ahead and talk about these right now the first one came from my guy raven pride he said what up it's your boy raven pride Hope you and the family are in good spirits as well as Ravens fans. We have to be honest about the business of this sport. Uh, these guys come into this game for two reasons, to play football and to get paid. So when it comes down to deciding who to keep, it's tough. And that's why these general managers get paid to make these decisions. Hopefully EDC can work his magic. Oh, yeah, they certainly get paid the big bucks to make the decision on who they're going to give the big bucks to. Uh, so, but it's, it's still fun for us all to talk about it as fans. That's, that's the beauty of it. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Justin. He said, uh, and, and these two are 10 Keep It Clean patrons, so I appreciate y'all. He said, thank you for all that you do. No, you ain't got to thank me for nothing. Y'all do all the work. I don't do nothing but send a message. Y'all do all the work, though. Anyway, he said, do you believe OBJ will come alive in the playoffs, or do you think he's lost a step? I believe he just isn't as smooth as he once was, but I hope I'm wrong. Um... Whew. Yeah, that's that's something right there. That ain't got nothing to do with the trade deadline. But, hey, um, I do hope that it's a little bit of both. I do think he certainly lost a step. He certainly lost several steps, it seems like. Uh, and, yeah, I, that is a perfect way to explain it. He does not seem as smooth as he once was. He's trying. He, he's really trying. But it's, it ain't clicked yet. It, it, I, I, think it'll, I think he'll wake up before the playoffs. Because, I mean, hey, I know people talk about force feeding and whatnot, but you paying them 15 mil, like, <laughs> it ain't too much force feeding for 15 mil. Like, you're trying to get your money's worth. And he has given you some nice flags, some nice penalties, but OBJ ain't come here to draw flags and draw penalties. So, yeah, I, I think he'll come alive before uh, playoff time, though. 
Um, next question came from Maurice, who's also a team keeper clean patron. Said, "Hey, we'd love to get your thoughts on potentially adding a running back, as reported by Dan, Diana Rossini. Everyone is talking about Derrick Henry or Saquon, you name it. But how about Zach Moss? Appreciate your work. Appreciate you, Maurice. Zach Moss would be a really good one because he would fit right in with the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, he already went off on the Ravens at M&T Bank Stadium. So why not?" Why not? And the Colts, they already showed, like, Jonathan Taylor was out. Zach Moss was in. He had been balling. Jonathan Taylor got back. They paid Jonathan Taylor right away. And Zach Moss, I mean, they, he, he, did what he, he did what he needed to do to earn him a little deal, too. But they didn't pay him. So, again, yeah, you can't pay everybody. We know Jonathan Taylor been doing this thing for years with the Colts and whatnot. Uh, but that could make Zach Moss be like, oh, well, well, well what about me? So that would be that would be a nice move. I, I would not be mad if they got a, a Zach Moss because he's shown like the Ravens know firsthand that Zach Moss uh, he can carry the load. Uh, next question came from uh, Nyan. Nyan always asks some fire questions, by the way. Uh, he said, "Hey, Graven, Nyan here, wishing you bountiful health and success for you and the fam. Appreciate that, man." So two points here. First point. I didn't care personally to get Derrick Henry. Gus Edwards has the same production with less carries. All we be paying for is a name and reputation. And with Gus getting three touchdowns against the Cardinals, it's almost like he said, Derrick who? Now, I get what you're saying, but I think it's more than that. I think you would be paying for uh, a running back that can also get the job done, that can carry that, carry that load as well. Um, and somebody that has experience, especially in the playoffs as well. Uh, so you, it's, it's more than just a name. Uh, I see where, you, where you're getting at, but I think it's more than just a name. It's somebody that, that can ball too. But anyway, he said, if anything, we should look to acquire more depth at corner, receiver, or defensive line. Because in my opinion, Clowney ain't it. All right, now we got a problem. Now we got a problem, Nyan. See, I I, I, I ain't appreciate that. Well, I ain't appreciate what you said about my guy Clowney. I, I, I don't like this question anymore. You, you started off hot, but then when you said that, I didn't appreciate that. So I'm, I'm going to need you to issue a, a formal apology, not only to the team, keep it clean, but not only to the Baltimore Ravens, but to Jadavian Clowney specifically. I need you to issue a formal public apology to hashtag JC24. But we'll continue just, just this once. Anyway, he said, um, second point, it's funny that Geno Stone continues to impress and make us and hopefully the front office believers. During the game, one of the commentators mentioned that we haven't seen something like this since, guess who? Ed Reed. I'm just saying, per my last email, hashtag Trey Williams 2024 offseason. Oof, we'll talk about that later. I, I can't I can't argue with it, though. I can't argue with that one. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later this week. Anyway, he said, I know I said two, but I'd like to say something else that's funny. With our defense playing like it has been, I'm more excited to see the defense than the offense lately. Initially, going into the season, I was excited for our offense, but this defense got me hyped. Oh, man, I I wouldn't want to take it back there because I, I remember the days like watching the Ravens of old when I would be more excited to see the defense than the offense. And that, like, the offense back then was like, ugh. Now, the offense right now is not like that. But, oof, they can be rough sometimes. So, uh, once they get clicking, though, that's when we, we really going to want to see them more. I mean, and you, all, you, all, you know what, Lamar, there's always something crazy that could happen every single game. I think us as Ravens fans, we get so spoiled by it. We, we take it for granted because uh, we're so used to it. Um, but uh, uh, so much of what he does is just is literally insane. Uh, but then he said, uh, sent with appreciation to the greatest NFL outsider and greatest source for all things Ravens coverage. Oh, that definitely ain't me. The greatest, no. But I, I do appreciate you, though, man. He said, go team, keep it clean. Uh, and shout out to uh, shout out to our guy, Nyan, man. I, I appreciate you a lot, man. Well, I ain't going to forget about that public apology that you owe to Jadavian Clowney, though. So I, I won't forget. I'm going to remind you every time I see your email, every time I see your name, I will gladly give you a reminder because you owe it to my guy. And he's going to show you, too. Why? Hey, I know he missed a sack. Uh, this past game, but he's getting it. The pressure's getting there. The pressure's getting. But what? Watch against some Seahawks, because Jadavian Clowney against his former team. That's where he really want to show out. So this is a big game for him coming up. But anyway, uh, last question came from my guy uh, Javo. And this looks like it's more for down the line. But he said, "Can we franchise tag Patrick Queen or Justin Matabike if a deal can be made, and then tag another free agent uh, the following year, like Bateman or Away, if they can't get a deal done with them?" Um, well, yeah, they can certainly tag Patrick Queen or Justin Matabike when their deals run out because they're getting ready to be free agents. Um, and if they did not want to let either go, if they couldn't come to an agreement with either one, they could place that franchise tag on them, and boom, they, they'll be stuck unless uh, they facilitated a trade or something and worked it out with another team. 
Um, but yeah, they so they could do that. Um, but now the next part, where you said, could they do it the following year uh, on Bateman or Oway if they couldn't get a deal done with them? Now they could, uh, but that would mean that they declined their fifth year options um, if they tagged them the following year. Uh, but they could, like, you could do that for any free agent. Like, you can only use the tag once on one player per season, but you can do it for any of your, uh, anybody that's a pending free agent for you. So, yeah, they have that option. And he also said, uh, is it me or is Lamar extremely focused uh, more than ever this year? I, I think Lamar is always focused. Um, I, I don't think this year changed his focus at all. I, I think um, the way that he's playing is a bit different, though. And the reason that I uh, the reason why I say that is because. You could tell, I feel like he is more reserved and uh, not even necessarily reserved, but I, it almost seems like he's just protecting himself more and looking out for himself long term more um, than he has before. Just the way that he runs, uh, the, the how he runs, just the, what, what he does when he runs, uh, it seems like he's just holding back. It seems like he's playing the long game uh, a bit more than he has in the past. It seems like he is uh, he is focused. Uh, but he's thinking about the future a lot, the the immediate future. Like, I'm talking about, like, playoffs and stuff like that. And it seems like he just really holding stuff down and reserving stuff until they get to there. Not saying holding plays back, not saying even but, – but just the way that he – I feel like he's uh, he not playing as loose as he has before. Still playing good now, but not playing as loose. So, I still – I think he's waiting to get loose until later on in the season, but yeah, especially come playoff time, then I think that's when I think he's going to go crazy and really put it all out there.